What's up guys, it's Brad from Ladder Protect here. Today I'm going to be going through the scene and compositing breakdown of the first of our Soviet shots in our new updated City Builder 3D asset-based add-on trailer. This will be the first of six scene breakdowns and one of the most straightforward 3D setups inside of Blender that shows how you can create pretty awesome city scenes fairly quickly. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our scene setup in its entirety. What we have here, as you can see, if we zoom in, are several of our new Soviet assets placed on just a basic ground plane here. We've just imported these city assets from our city builder tab here on the right side. See, we have Soviet large two, Soviet large one, and then we've duplicated Soviet large two a few times as well. And uh, whenever you duplicate things using option D instead of shift D, you're actually duplicating the same data. So it actually takes Blender less memory to calculate that new uh, object since it's just duplicating the old one. So that's what I've done here. And uh, then again, we've used Soviet large three asset as well. Soviet large four and Soviet large five. So we've used all of the large building assets in this specific shot. Then we've also added, of course, a ground plane to our scene. And as you can see here, if we go ahead and go to the material settings of this ground plane, it's just a very basic, dark, glossy material. And even if you're not actually seeing the ground with your camera in the scene, it's important to have some kind of ground plane so that light isn't coming from below the buildings, creating a kind of an uncanny feel. So it's best to have kind of a textured ground plane that's kind of spread out so that you're kind of recreating the general shades of the environment that would be lighting your scene as if it were in the real world. For example, in the real world, when sun hits the ground, obviously it's going to bounce off and refract. And in the city on the ground, you'd likely see kind of some street colors, um, some darker asphalt colors on the ground. So that's what we've kind of tried to do here uh, to replicate that same environment so that the lighting is a little bit more accurate. Of course, it would be even better, as you'll see in some of the other scene setups, to actually use a uh, texture of kind of some asphalt from a city but for this specific example we found that this worked pretty well for our setup so we just decided to go with it other than that we've also added a sun to light our environment and as you can see here our sun strength is at three and we haven't changed the color at all it's just a white sunlight kind of edging our different city assets in the environment here and as you can see here if we zoom in we have our cable cam cinematic movement rig that uh, just kind of pushes in over the course of our shot and as you probably know from our previous videos our cable cam cinematic movement rig is primarily a two control system so that you can get sweeping camera moves fairly quickly inside of blender so what we've done here is we've just animated the base moving forward and then we've used the pan and tilt control here to keep it pointing at the main building in the center of our shot here and I think we did a little bit of animation on our pan and tilt control there as well as you can see to make sure that it's not totally centered on that building but kind of moves around in a little bit more organic way and just so you guys get a better idea on how that cable cam cinematic movement rig works i'll go ahead and import another one into our scene here we'll go to the cable cam tab import the cable cam i'll drag this one off to the side and scale it up so this is essentially what we use to animate a lot of these shots in the City Builder 3D trailer. And there are two primary controls that you use to control this rig. You have first your cable cam base position control. So essentially this is uh, just where your camera is going to be at any given time. So you can animate this one and uh, create those sweeping moves very easily. And then of course we have our cable cam pan and tilt control here, which controls where the camera is looking at any given time. So you can animate these two controls to create some uh, pretty organic and sweeping kind of those helicopter flyover shots inside of Blender. And uh, the third control we've actually added, it's a little bit hard to access here, but it's just more of a correction tool. It's just an empty here around our cable cam rig. And what you can do is you can rotate it on the Y axis to kind of create some correction uh, depending on what your shot is looking like. And I don't recommend going crazy with this one, but it does allow a little bit of correction in case your horizon skyline is a little bit off. You can uh, use this to adjust it. And again, if you just kind of leave it here, you can still animate accordingly. Uh, it'll just be kind of a different rotated look. But uh, yeah, that's our cable cam cinematic movement rig. We've used that in a lot of the shots in the trailer, as you'll see in some of the other breakdowns. But let's go ahead and delete this one for the time being and finish up the scene setup here. So pretty much that is most of our scene setup here. We've also, under the world panel here, we've added a basic sky environment to our scene. So under the surface settings, as you can see here, we have a sky texture. We've moved around the sun direction a little bit. And the sky environment, as you probably know, is just going to create that ambient lighting. So we're not just lit by the single source of the sun here. We wanna create that ambience as if we're in the real world, as if you know there are clouds and ambient lighting there as well. So that's what this is doing. And we're also trying to 
match this sky texture as close as we can to uh, this background sky plane texture here as well, which I'll go through here in a second. But anyway, that's our world settings, just a basic sky environment. And then we've left the strength at one and played around with the turbidity and the ground albedo settings to kind of get a nice look that we like. And uh, yeah, that was it for our environment. The last thing we added to our scene was just this background image here. And this uh, plane right here is just a projected image of a sky texture. We use the images as planes option here under the uh, import settings to uh, import a picture of a sky. And then under the material settings here, we've just changed it to an emission material with that same image texture. And we've just kind of placed it in the shot where it would make a nice background for our CG elements. So fairly simple setup there. I'll go ahead and open up the camera view here just to show you guys through the camera of our cable cam rig. A lot of the times when I'm composing shots, I like to have a two panel setup here. So I'll have my uh, wide shot here on the left side so that I can kind of work and place things in the scene. So if I want to import a new asset, I can do that and just kind of place it wherever I want. And then on the right side, I'll have my camera view where I can see where the objects are according to what the camera is seeing at the time. And as you can see here, if we play through the timeline, you can see the camera movement kind of move through our scene. And another cool thing we've done here, as you can see on the right side, is we've actually animated the focal length of the camera as the cable cam cinematic movement rig is pushing in. So this is what uh, a lot of people call the Hitchcock zoom or Zolly effect, whatever you want to call it. But what's happening here is as the physical camera body is pushing in, the zoom of the camera is zooming out so that the uh, focal length is going from a longer lens to a wider lens. And as you can see, the buildings in the background are kind of warping and appearing like they're getting further off into the distance as the camera moves in here. And if we just select the camera here on our cable cam cinematic movement rig, you can see under the focal length here on the right side that as we go through the timeline, our focal length is actually being animated to change over that period of time as well, creating kind of that interesting cinematic Zolly zoom for kind of a uh, magnificent or surreal type shot, depending on what you're going for. And uh, yeah, that's essentially our scene set up here. In addition to exporting our beauty pass, we've also so under the passes tab here, we've exported a combined pass, which is our beauty pass. And we've also exported a mist pass as well as an ambient occlusion pass as well. And to export those passes in your compositor, what you would do is you would just go under the compositing tab here. And as you can see here, our beauty pass image here is going to our main composite, which will be output where you uh, choose your output settings here under the output tab. And then our ambient occlusion pass is going to another file output in another folder. And then finally our mist pass, which is very crucial for a lot of these shots to achieve that depth as if you're in a real environment is going to another file output as well. And then we can use all of those different passes to composite them within a compositor of our choice. And then for the output, as usual, I've used the OpenEXR file format with an alpha channel so that we can more easily seamlessly composite all of those different elements together. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. We rendered out all those different passes at 1080p resolution at 100% and around 40 samples. And then as usual, we've also selected the seed stopwatch for some noise variation in our scene and it's also crucial whenever you're exporting your mist pass to test out how the mist pass is looking before you actually export it because sometimes you need to change the start and end points of that mist pass itself so that you can get the uh, right amount of detail that you want to add that mist to your scene so you need to play around with the uh, world settings here under the mist pass options and I have another tutorial on that I'll put a link to that mist pass tutorial in the description because this breakdown is already getting a little bit long but check out that if you're interested in mist pass compositing. When compositing these city shots, it's pretty much the most crucial one, in my opinion, for getting that realistic look. But uh, anyways, guys, that's it inside of Blender. Let's go ahead and move to After Effects, and I'll go through how we composited the different elements together fairly quickly. All right, guys, here's our composite inside of After Effects. Super simple setup here. Before going through the layers, I'll go ahead and play through it here really quick. And you can definitely see that dolly zoom effect much easier in this rendered out version. And as you can see, we have some atmosphere in the foreground here. And then we've composited all of our different passes here at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and go through them one by one to show you what we've done here, starting with the beauty pass. So I'll go ahead and disable everything else. And this is our basic beauty pass. As you can see here, this is just essentially what you would get straight out of Blender without any different compositing passes added. Then the next layer that we added is our ambient occlusion pass, which as you can see here, here, darkens the shadows a bit and adds some shading in uh, areas where there would be less ambient light. That's what ambient occlusion does. So as you can see here, if we isolate this layer by itself, 
it's just adding shadows right where uh, there wouldn't be as much ambient light. And then we've changed the layer mode to multiply so that only the shadows show up on top of our beauty pass to composite it more effectively. And then as you can see here under the transform settings under opacity, we can also adjust how much shadow we want to add to our scene. And I've just left it at 100 to enhance the shadows and add a little bit more detail to the shadows themselves. The next compositing pass that we added on top of this is our mist pass. And as you can see here, when we add it, it kind of lifts the shadows a little bit in a very procedural way so that it adds more mist in the background and less mist in the foreground. So if we enable this by itself, as you can see here, you can see that in the background, you're going to have much more mist added. And then in the foreground, there's a very little mist added to create that depth in your environment a little bit more effectively. And again, as we did with the ambient occlusion pass, what you can do to composite the mist pass is you can change the opacity to change the amount of mist you want added on top of your original render. And uh, another thing you can do with mist passes to control the elements a little bit better is you can add some color correction effects to them. And I've also added a blur to kind of blend the mist pass in with the environment a bit more. But the main thing you want to think about is when you add this curve setting, for example, it's just kind of crushing the shadows a little bit more and uh, creating a little bit less contrast in the mist itself. Um, but that's something that you can play around with. All of these different layers that you're exporting from Blender are just data that you can use to composite your render a lot more realistically. But that's our mist pass again. And as you can see here, if we play with the opacity of it, we can add a lot more mist or we can just keep it, you know, very little. Uh, but I chose a opacity of 16 to just lift the shadows a tiny bit. And of course, as you can see here, just to give an example of what the color correction effects can do, you can either use a levels or a curves, um, but you can play around and you can lift or take away mist from certain parts of the shot while leaving it in other parts of the shot and have a little bit more control over different parts of your render to get a little bit more of a unique result. But anyways, the next layer that we added is just a basic atmosphere element. This is just a super old element from Action Essentials. And what I've done here is I've just animated it moving across the frame as our camera pushes in. And this is just a way to create a little bit of variation in the mist to get a little bit more realistic result. As you probably know, in the real world, things aren't quite as uniform as we see them in the computer. So it's nice to add a little bit of variation in the elements that you use in your composite. So that's what this uh, atmosphere did. And I did this in a lot of the shots that uh, we created for the new City Builder 3D trailer. And it just adds a little bit more realism to the final output. Finally, for the last two layers here, just a basic color correction. I use the Lumetri color effect inside of After Effects. You can also use the same effect inside of Adobe Premiere. It's just kind of their standard color corrector. Under the creative setting, I've just used the uh, Fuji look here. Uh, one of my favorite looks. It adds a little bit of green and a little bit of uh, blue to the image. Um, but I think for the Soviet pack it created a lot of uh, good texture for the environments i've also played around with the curve setting a little bit in this color correction layer as well but i left most of the color wheels alone and just gone with that general fuji look while adjusting the uh, basic contrast of the scene here but uh yeah that's pretty much all the concepts i used for this final shot i hope you enjoyed this video as always feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below i will be releasing the other six scene and compositing breakdowns of the shots added to our new city builder 3 3D asset based add-on trailer so stay tuned for those and if you're interested feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification. I'll see you next time.